the atonement. Did Jesus Christ die for our sins? Christians believe that every child is born with the taint of the original sin committed by our parents, Prophet Adam and Eve, peace be upon them. The sin was committed when they disobeyed our Creator by eating from the forbidden tree. Christians believe that since all men are born in a sinful state, it is necessary to believe in the atonement or the idea that Jesus Christ died for our sins. Christians believe one can attain salvation by believing that Jesus Christ died for their sins, without the need for worshiping God, doing good deeds, or adhering to the holy law, because Jesus Christ fulfilled it for them. However, nowhere in the Bible did Jesus Christ explicitly state that he would die to save humanity from sin. If Jesus Christ did die for our sins, he would have emphasized this crucial detail and taught this information in detail. According to the Holy Quran and the Bible itself, one can receive forgiveness for sins solely through sincere repentance, with forgiveness sought directly from God. If God the Almighty wished and willed to forgive humanity, then he certainly could have done so without the need to sacrifice Jesus Christ, his supposed begotten son. Christians state that God sacrificed his only begotten son to save humanity. But if God owns the entire universe, why did God need to sacrifice Jesus Christ? Why does God need to sacrifice his only son when he owns everything? Why couldn't God save his only son as opposed to sacrificing him? Is it even really sacrificing when God could restore Jesus Christ's life since he can do anything? If all a Christian needs to do to obtain paradise is believe that Jesus Christ died for his sins, why does one even bother to learn the Bible or the teachings of Christ? According to the Christian beliefs, one can live a sinful life if they believe in atonement for sins. They can live however they wish, as Paul taught, not Jesus Christ. Apparently, to Christians, the commandments of God are worthless and do not need to be followed, as they can earn a free trip to paradise by believing that Jesus Christ died for their sins. Not only is the concept of the atonement not mentioned in the Bible and not taught by Jesus Christ, but there are biblical verses that contradict the concept of the atonement and prove the idea to be a fabrication. These verses state that no person is held responsible for another's sin. No parent is responsible for a sin committed by their child, and vice versa. That means that we are not held responsible for the sin committed by our parents, Adam and Eve, peace be upon them. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 16. Moreover, in those days they shall say no more, the fathers have eaten a sour grape, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But every one shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 29 and 30. Take this passage. The child will not share the guilt of the parent, nor will the parent share the guilt of the child. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. It is clearly stated in the Bible that the child will not share the guilt of the parent, nor will the parent share the responsibility of the child. The concept of atonement was started by Paul long after this verse was written. Paul proved himself an enemy of Jesus Christ throughout his ministry. He claimed that Jesus Christ came to him in a dream and afterward became a believer. He then made some radical changes to the religion Changes that neither Jesus Christ nor the Bible describes. Why are Christians following the teachings of Paul and not Jesus Christ? How can all the previous righteous messengers and prophets of God, such as Prophet Abraham, Moses, Noah, etc., peace be upon them, 
go to paradise if they did not accept Jesus Christ as their savior, who would not die for their sins since he was not yet born? Will these righteous messengers and prophets of God go to hell? Why didn't these messengers and prophets of God ever know of or teach the original sin and redemption ideas? When someone approached Jesus Christ and asked him what he must do to obtain eternal life, he never mentioned anything about the atonement or that he must believe that Jesus Christ came to die for his sins. Instead, Jesus told him that he must keep the commandments. Let us review the conversation held between them. Just then, a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Which ones? he inquired. Jesus replied, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 to 21. The Bible clearly states that the commandments are required and need to be followed, and if anyone says otherwise, they will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. What good is it to have faith, but not back it up with good deeds, asks the Bible, which contradicts what Christians believe today since they follow the teachings of Paul and not Jesus Christ himself. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith, but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? James chapter 2 verse 14. According to Islam, the notion of original sin is inconsistent with the justice of the Almighty, the All-Merciful, the All-Loving. How can God, the All-Just, make an innocent child responsible for or liable to bear the guilt of a sin committed by a distant ancestor? Some Christians believe that even infants will go to hell if they die without being baptized since they were born with the inherited sin and never accepted Jesus Christ as their savior. The Bible contradicts this, proving that children are not born in a sinful state and therefore can go to paradise upon death. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Matthew chapter 19, verse 14. The idea that people are born sinful because of an act they did not commit is illogical. It is not like God to enforce such a concept. Imagine an innocent baby being born, then dying a year later and going to hell. Where is the justice? It is not for one soul to carry the burden of another. And there is no justice to be found in one person's punishment for saving another when they never committed the sin themselves. The Holy Quran shares that when Allah taught the prophet Adam, peace be upon him, how to ask for forgiveness, and when prophet Adam, peace be upon him, made a mistake and asked for forgiveness, God the Almighty accepted his repentance without sacrificing anyone innocent. This is the definition of real mercy unlike the definition that Christians embrace. Then Adam received some words from his Lord, 
and he accepted his repentance. He is the ever-relenting, the most merciful. Quran chapter 2 verse 37 Islam teaches that everyone is responsible and will be held accountable for their actions. In short, everyone is responsible for their salvation. Salvation only comes from the act of believing in the one God and following His commandments.